My name is Paul McCrory. I'm a neurologist from Melbourne, Australia, and my talk today will be on the definition of concussion and its relationship to mild traumatic brain injury. In this presentation, I will discuss the definition of concussion, discuss the relationship between concussion and more significant brain injury, and also start to provide some background as to how we might evolve definitions in the future. It's important to note that the history of concussion goes back thousands of years. Although descriptions of severe brain injury occur in the ancient Egyptian, Roman and Greek literature, it was the Arabic and Persian literature, particularly Razis at the dawn of the last millennium, who was the first physician to really talk about a mild reversible brain injury and then subsequent authors throughout the Renaissance and Middle Ages started to elaborate concepts of brain shaking and the term concussion or concussio or in the European and Latin parlance commotio cerebri became the commonly used term for mild brain injury over the last thousand years. It's only in the last century that people have started to use the term mild traumatic brain injury and really since the work of Brian Jennett and Graham Teasdale in Glasgow and the widespread utilisation of the Glasgow Coma Scale that the importance of separating mild, moderate and severe brain injury has become apparent. The reason for the Glasgow Coma Scale initially was to try and prognosticate as to who might need neurosurgical intervention because of intracranial pathology rather than trying to define mild injury as a separate entity. When we talk about concussion, or sports concussion, or sport-related concussion, there are a number of definitions that have been put forward, and to some degree all of these have limitations. Probably the earliest definition in the sporting parlance was the Congress of Neurological Surgeons back in 1966, and they tried to, to use a paradigm which had been used in might severe brain injury and reflecting the importance in their mind of loss of consciousness and post-traumatic amnesia rather than symptoms. And while this definition simply was a transient disturbance in neurological function, it really didn't provide enough operational definitional points to make it useful for clinicians. And so over a long period of time, with the combination of neurosurgeons, neurologists, and the developing sports medicine specialties around the world. Various groups have come to define the condition based on signs, symptoms, neuropsychological disturbance, and other features presented by patients. In some cases, these have related to neuroimaging abnormalities, or simply not specified how they relate to more significant brain pathology. Probably the most influential of those definitions is the one put forward by the Concussion in Sports Group, which has been the subject of five consensus conferences to date, and that definition has evolved into our current definition. This is the Concussion in Sport Group's definition and it highlights the fact that concussion is a subset of traumatic brain injury caused by biomechanical forces. And in the consensus meetings, these were the points that could be agreed to by everybody. That the injury can occur from a direct blow or a whiplash type injury. That you have rapid onset of impaired neurological function. But it is important to note that in the early stages, the symptoms and signs do evolve. So making a diagnosis on a sideline or pitch side with an athlete is often problematic. The question of neuropathological changes is complex and certainly is the topic of another talk in this series. But when we talk about the symptoms, headache, visual disturbance, dizziness, nausea and so forth, we really think of those as being caused by functional or non-structural injury and accordingly 
structural CT and MRI scan are normal. The, the complex debate at the moment about long-term neuropathological changes is not uh, the same as the acute symptoms and their causes. The majority of cases get better relatively quickly. We know in about 80% of cases they have clinical recovery within two weeks. However, there may be some subclinical cognitive disturbance at that point. But there are individuals whose symptoms may be prolonged for months or years. And with many of these definitional issues, it's important to notice, note that there should be no other cause which might explain the symptoms. And these points are elaborated on that slide. When we talk about the relationship between concussion or, in the European parlance, commotio cerebri, it's important to understand there is a spectrum of a brain injury going from mild to severe, or even ultra-mild to severe. The Glasgow Coma Score, as it was originally written, was supposed to be applied six hours post-injury in order to separate out the categories of severity. And this was to allow for resuscitation and natural recovery to occur before the need to decide about neurosurgical intervention. And as such, it's arguably the most useful scale for hospitalised or more severe injuries that exists. Unfortunately, by the time that many people present with their sport-related concussion, their Glasgow Coma score is normal, even though they may have had a period where they've been unconscious or ongoing symptoms. So it's very difficult then to use the Glasgow Coma Scale as a means of assessing concussion or even prognosticating about concussion. So on this slide you'll see a cartoon which illustrates the separation, if you will, between concussion and mild brain injury. Now, in this case, it's separated by the scoring on the Glasgow Coma Scale, but from a pathological or a pathophysiological concept, you can think of the Glasgow Coma Scale as more structural-based injuries up to severe injury, which is, has fairly catastrophic uh, pathological damage. And at the mild end, or the concussive end of that spectrum, there may be some microscopic damage, but it's certainly not enough to be seen on structural imaging. It's important when you think of these injuries to distinguish what is a trivial injury, in other words, somebody who might bump their head or fall over, see stars or have some very transient symptoms, but then not have any ongoing symptoms which would make it into a concussive or commotion type injury. At the moment, our classification of injury is relatively crude. Generally speaking, it's based on the presence and number of symptoms or how long they last without putting any particular weight on different symptoms. None of the definitions at the moment use imaging and particularly the newer advanced imaging platforms to assist in the diagnosis. None of them to date are using proteomics or metabolomics such as biomarkers, protein signatures, mRNA and other uh, biochemical techniques to try and elaborate that injury. And when you compare concussion and multraumatic brain injury to other medical diagnoses such as various cancers and so forth, you'll understand that the increasing complexity of medical knowledge now means that we can define diseases by a whole range of different domains. And these, when used properly, enable us to develop treatment algorithms and prognosticate about the pattern of injury that's seen with those situations. So I think the next evolution of these diagnoses will come about through the integration of this information. At the moment, this is still in an experimental stage, but hopefully it will reach a point where it's clinically useful. So in summary, at the moment, our current cons cons concussion definitions are based on consensus of the clinical features rather than integrating imaging, biochemical, genetic and other measures. And the future will be critical um, in terms of how we take this further. 
Concussion and mild traumatic brain injury, the terms are often used interchangeably, but they really refer to a different pathophysiological construct. And while you could include all concussion under mild traumatic brain injury, it, given that we use the Glasgow Coma Scale as the predominant way of separating out these injuries, that system is really not terribly useful in that sense. The other problem with the term mild traumatic brain injury is it doesn't differentiate uh, pathology or, or physiology. So as well as moving towards more objective definitions, I think the integration of concussion and mild traumatic brain injury into a commonly unified definition will be an important forward step. And there are moves afoot to try and do this in the next year or two. Thank you for listening.